Hello there, welcome along to the sweet spot. Bruce Millington and Steve Palmer with the Race and Post's weekly golf show. This week, looking ahead to one absolutely brilliant tournament, dripping in quality, and another so devoid of quality that someone called Brandon Harkins is the second favourite. We'll get to those, but first look back on three Interesting tournaments last week where the theme was rolling back the years. Before we talk about those, Steve, how are you? Away from golf and away from betting, what were the best and worst things that happened to you in the last seven days? Oh, you're getting me away from things, are you? Mm, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just I a suppose... nice little sort of warm up, you know? Yeah, yeah. I suppose the best thing um, was uh, supping some Madri. It's my new favourite lager. I enjoy. Oh, everyone's yeah. drinking Madri, aren't they? Yeah, it's a real hit. You know, it's so smooth. Mm. And um, I read a, I read an article about it. It's the fastest sort of growing lager of all time, and absolutely doesn't go anywhere near Spain. It's brewed in Tadcaster in Yorkshire. That is mad, isn't it? Mm. Uh, if you, but it's uh, pardon nice. The pun, pun, the pun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so you had some madries. That was the That's highlight. What about the low point? Did you cry at all last week? Uh, no tears. No tears. Uh, managed to get through the week with no tears. Uh, I said, but but illness again. You know, I I, I, I yeah, I've just gone back down again. But the, the temperature's dipped. It's a good excuse. I mean, I don't know whether the madry intake was related to the illness. <laughs> can weaken your immune system, can't it? Maybe a bit of the Ibethan flu. But uh, mm. uh, yeah, but the, the, t- the temperature is really annoying me. I thought we were through through the cold snap, and here we are in the depths of it again. March tomorrow, so hopefully things are looking up. Oh, by the oh, way, I oh. must remember. I, I keep forgetting. Uh, if you enjoy the show, please do like subscribe comment and share that's it isn't it yeah brilliant yeah, so well done so we're not broadcasting again f- until you do one of those things okay right well done thank you right then steve uh where should we start our review I, I as i say it was all about golfers who haven't won for a while and so there was nice human interest stories and i guess none nicer than a chap who seems very very popular a bit of a character marcel seen who won the indian open that was good wasn't it yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you've 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 hit the theme on the on the head there, if that's an expression, because uh, yeah, real 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 parallel. <laughs> let's make it. In, okay. Let's make it an expression. You've hit the theme on the on the head of that nail, uh, because uh, you yeah, know Chris Kirk and Marcel Siem. Well, come on to Chris Kirk. Yeah, they hadn't worked one for many a moon on on the main tours. Um, Kirk hadn't won since 2015. CM hadn't won since 2014. But they both. Had one on the lower leagues. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kirk won on the Corn Ferry in 2020. CM won on the Challenge Tour in 2021. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the Lord works in mysterious ways, and uh, he's ended two droughts last week. Um, yeah, he did. On, on. I, I, I thought it was really nice with him because you could tell by the way that you know everyone talks and you know there was a lot, lot of love and a lot of support for him on Twitter. There wasn't there, yeah, and yeah. he seems like an amazing kind of guy because he teed off at 18. And promptly lit a cigarette and then he was last sort of spotted undoing his flies heading to the bushes for a, a wee wee. I mean, like, you know, <laughs> he seems like one of those golfers doesn't really care that much, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's very un-German like, isn't he? Yeah, he's not. He's, you know, most Germans just sort of characterise as, as, as robotic golfers and, and, you know, like Bernard Langer obsessing about yardages. But, uh, yeah, Mark C- CM seemed a real carefree character. And, um, and he had a nice uh, bright shirt on. He did have a nice bright shirt on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember Marcel Siem when I was in Valderrama. He fell, he fell in the shower and word got round. This is many moon, moons ago. He, he tripped over in the shower and really injured himself before the the, um, the, the, the Volvo Masters there. So I managed to oppose him. Uh, yeah, that, that was about 25 years ago. But God, uh, yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's recovered from the shower incident. And um, uh, Can you yeah, exonerate the visor? I guess it, he has to use a visor because you couldn't get your man bun under a baseball cap, could you? So we're, you're very down on visored players, but I think he might be a, a slight exception to the rule there, wouldn't you think? Yeah, you're right. He has, he has no choice but to wear the visor, does he? But uh, yeah, the Germans dominated that event in the end, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah, him and yeah. Yannick Paul. Yeah, I think Yannick Paul... Um, yeah, he's such a consistent ball striker. He, 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 we, we've got to back him on difficult courses like like last week's one. Um, yeah, it's not a pretty swing, but it just, just churns out greens and regulations. So, uh, yeah, yeah, Yannick Paul's on our radar. Marcel CM, I don't know where he's going to go from here. You know, I think he'll probably just go and relax, enjoy a few more cigarettes, as you say. Fair enough. 33 to 1, I think, seem was. 25 to 1 was the price on Kirk. He was pretty much fourth or fifth favourite. And he won a thrilling... Head to head with Eric Cole down the stretch. So both good stories. Obviously, Kirk has battled alcoholism. Uh, Eric Cole 
has had family tragedy. His brother died very suddenly, and he's been diagnosed with various illnesses. So I think there was a nice story there. Whoever won it, the shot that Kirk hit into the into the green on the playoff hole was just an absolute beauty. I mean, he he had that incredible rush of blood in the in regulation play, didn't it? Where he went for the green and, and was about an inch away from hitting it, but then it rebounded and almost landed in the sponsor's car in the middle of the lake. So it was a right old ding-dong, wasn't it? Both of them thought they must have had one hand on the trophy at one stage. I, I enjoyed it very much. Yeah, I thought it was a real feel-good story for Chris Kirk. He's a really likeable bloke. He talks very openly and honestly. His press conference afterwards was really interesting. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's quite funny at times as well. You know, he, was, he, he chuckles about what he's been through. Um, and, I mean, the funniest moment for me was that, you know, you know there's like subtle differences. Yeah, we, uh, Americans and, and us Brits, we sort of think we've got the same language, but we don't, don't we? There's subtle differences in how we say things. And like over here, if we're disappointed in something, we say we're pissed off. Mm. And, the, you know, the Americans just say we're, uh, we're pissed. That's pissed. right, they do, yeah. So, yeah, so Chris, do. during that, during that he's, he's talking about his alcoholism and then he talks about the shot into the water in the seven second hole and he goes, oh, oh I was pissed with that. I was, yeah. I was pissed when I put it in the water. Mm. <laughs> I just thought, blimey. Yeah, what an admission that is. Yeah, he was off the wagon. That's why it's such a bad shot there. But uh, yeah, yeah, just uh, no. it's, it's not what you meant. Yeah, it's, it's no, an amazing, no, it's an amazing recovery. And uh, yeah, he, yeah, again, at the end of the conference, it was a really nice, nice moment. The reporter was saying, is this the first time you're going to celebrate without a drink? You know, having one on the PGA Tour. And he said, yeah. And um, he says he's massively into his diet coke. So him and Sepp Stracker, his best mate, Sepp Stracker, Sepp Stracker, a, a phenomenal diet coke drinker, apparently. Uh, it drinks like gallons of it. So, um, yeah, they had a big wow. night on the Diet Cokes afterwards. So. Good stuff. Yeah. Excellent. That's good. Um, oh, by the way, did, did you notice last week we were talking about the erectile dysfunction advert? There's another one this week, isn't there? there for like male kind of incontinence pad uh, pads. Oh. Did you see oh. that? Oh, no, I didn't. That I didn't was being catch played that a one. few times. Yeah, there was, was a, it? yeah. It's basically a, a sort of guy, late 50s, early 60s. Good looking chap with a moustache and he's all there, but he's standing behind this medical screen. And then he says he admits he's got this problem. He's, he's a little bit kind of leaky. Um, oh, and so he, he suddenly turns up with this pair of like quite thick sort of absorbent pants. And I was thinking, you know, you, you have to go all those to those lengths to stop your kids focusing on the on the details of the erectile dysfunction. And now you've got yeah. another one you've got to try and divert. Their yeah, yeah, from. yeah, yeah. I think I could tackle that one a bit more head on. You know, yeah, I might have to get some of them. They say <laughs> <laughs> they sound quite useful, yeah. I could use them. Uh, no, the one that winds me up is the fanatics.co.uk now. You know, they're just you know the one where they say, oh, mm. show what a great fan you are by buying yeah. a shirt, you know, like they've yeah. come up with some amazing idea that no one's had before. Mm. Uh, you know, support a football team. Oh, you could buy a shirt. Yeah. Um, yeah, just show you're a fanatic. That why I did did it. <laughs> da, 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 da. Just, in my flipping head all the time. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I I fanatically hate that advert, but yeah, the erect there wasn't erectile dysfunction on last week, thank God. Oh, that's good then. Um, and on the Liv Mayakoba front, Charles Howell the third, another player who, who's been in the doldrums for a few years, suddenly trousered four million quid. I mean, where did that final round sixty three come from to turn it into an out and out procession? It did. I think the Saudi bosses might be a bit angry with Charles out of the third because it just it just killed the tournament. You know, we often talk about the, the, the tournament not starting until the back nine Sunday. That tournament was over by the back nine Sunday because Chucky Three Sticks was playing like a, you know, Tiger Woods in his pomp. Um, mm. Yeah. So so on the other side, yeah, they put them up against each other, don't they? Deliberately, you know, PJ Tour timings are, are done to take on the live. They didn't need to worry about it on Sunday because um, you know nobody could have been watching the live. You had a really tight tussle going on on the PJ Tour and you just had a Charles Al procession there. I mean, yeah, you know, I'm a long, long time fan of Chuck here. I think he's, I think he's a yeah, He's a bit of a pet. Team. He's one of our sort of pet golfers, isn't he? We like him, don't we? Well, when he first came onto the scene, I just thought world number one. He did, I know. Yeah, you, 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 um, he was like the, the Thomas Peters of his time, wasn't he? Every week it was Charles Al the third. Yeah. yeah, I had a serious man crush on him. I remember going to the mm. Open. He played. He made his Open debut, and I was there, and I was just like in awe. I was thinking, oh my god, this is the man. But oh, yeah, really? he's a massive underachiever, and um, you know, I was, I was, yeah, I was pleased for Chucky. But yeah, it's it, it, yeah, it's difficult tournament tournaments all round last week. You know, I just couldn't get a penny place money. Yeah, you know, Pablo Larrabal. I mean, he finished a shot shining. Um, yeah, just couldn't find the, couldn't find any place money. Don't mind, mate. These things happen. You can't. I mean, it's difficult, isn't it? When by the, by its very nature, you're tipping at big prices, so you can't always get. Oh, there's no guarantees. No guarantees in this game. 
Were you I'm, able to watch the Live Golf, by the way? I mean, yeah, like, yeah, we yeah. Were talking last week. It was on YouTube, wasn't it? I think. No, no, no. It wasn't on YouTube. It was on the app. So they, they, it's on the ah. Live Golf. Yeah, yeah. I must tell tell viewers this who didn't catch up with it last week. Yeah, we, it was, we, yeah. The communication is very poor. Yeah, we all know that the, the Americans could get it on this streaming site, but the UK viewers were left in the dark until the day, and then. Um, yeah, I found out it was on this Live Golf Plus app. So yeah, I was just watching on watching on there, um, and it was quite an interesting view. And I mean, Dustin Johnson. I like to comment on Dustin Johnson. I talked about how long he'd had off. He had almost four months away from competition, and he looked massively out of condition. You know, I've never seen I've never seen really? Dustin look so well, tubby. Yeah, yeah. yeah, a bit tubby, a bit tubby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sort of fat ass, and uh, yeah, I um, yeah, I, I, and he didn't play very well. Yeah, he finished thirty seventh of forty eight. Oh, seven over par, seven over par in the final round. So yeah. I, I wasn't impressed with Dustin Johnson last week. Uh, maybe he'll come on for the run. Mm, OK. And one more thing before we look ahead, Steve. Again, the difference in the amount of stick golfers who engage with anything to do with Saudi get in relation to any other sport. And I'm obviously talking about that ludicrous fight that everyone was going on about. I mean, what is wrong with people? Why is that f- boxing thing so exciting to people it's just not it's not proper top-notch boxing and yet my twitter timeline is just absolutely full of people going on about this fury v paul fight but of course it takes place in saudi so you know we've talked about it before haven't we someone like laurie Cantor goes over there trying to set his family up for life and gets absolutely vilified and you know they're all completely sort of you know uh tainted and they're pariahs aren't they from the world of golf and yet loads of other sports take place in Saudi and everyone just no nobody bats an eyelid so I I, I do think that the golfers get it a bit hard in comparison to other sports people I, that, that's a point I'd like to make I think you're absolutely right and it is to do with looking after your families isn't it it's a point that does need to be made I mean you know Ian Poulter I've given Poulter some stick through the years for being outspoken a bit too cocky and brash I find some of his comments difficult but if you watch the, the full swing episode that involves him you see he's a really good dad yeah, he's a really oh, really? Good dad. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You I can still see haven't that... got beyond the first ten minutes. Have you finished it now? I've done four now. I've done four. That's it, done... isn't it? No, there's eight, isn't there? Oh, is it eight? Yeah, yeah. I think oh. there's. I think there's eight. I hope there's eight. I'm, I'd like to, oh, like okay. to see more. Um, but yeah, yeah. Poulter admits it's, it, yeah, it's a business decision to look after his family, and because uh, it's, it's all relative. Yeah, you get you call him greedy, but then he's got all the, he's this massive house and planes to pay for and that, and, mm. um, and he was missing cuts. So I. Yeah, the Poulter one's interesting. It starts off, you'll think, yeah, he makes some poor comments at the start, and you'll think, yeah, he's going to justify how I think about him. But you just see him around his you family. You warm to him, do you? Uh, yeah, I just, I just can see he's a good dad, and that, yeah, that's obviously more important than anything, isn't it? Absolutely, mate. Brilliant. Okay, right then, let's look ahead. And this week we have got another fantastic tournament. It's the Arnold Palmer Invitational. Really looking forward to this one. John Rahm is back out. Can he continue his phenomenal run of form? He's six to one favourite to do so. Rory McIlroy, nine to one. Scuddy, the Crocus Scheffler is 10 to one. Will Zalatoris, 18, along with Colin Morikawa. And then it's 20 to one, Max Homer and Justin Thomas. 22, Schofle and Hovland. 25, Finau and Cantley and Day. And 28, Bar. So again, Steve, presumably this is an elevated tournament, isn't it? Yeah, we're going to end up looking like an elevated tournament, aren't we? I Do you mean, think they should think of a better name for them than elevated tournaments? I mean, can't they call them like platinum tournaments or something? Yes, yes, I agree with that. It's, it's not a great word, is it, elevated? I mean, yeah. they, toy, they toyed with designated, which is an even worse word. So, oh, that's yeah, rubbish, yeah. I think you're onto something there. Yeah, 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 I think whenever I hear the word elevated, I think of things like blood pressure and liver toxin readings, all those horrible things that a doctor refers to. So they need to think yeah, of a new yeah. name now, I think. Or elevators. I think of elevators, like oh, lifts, yeah. as we call them over yeah. there. OK, where is the tournament taking place? What sort of course is it? What kind of players will it suit? Bay Hill Club and Lodge, Orlando, Florida, 7,466 yards, par 72, four par fives, 120 runners going to post, $20 million in the kitty, 3.6 to the winner. Bay Hill, ah, there's a question. So, a quick question. Will the slightly smaller field I mean, they will actually deign to get round in time? I mean, it was yeah. it was ridiculous last week, wasn't it, in the Honda, where, the, you know, we didn't have any three third round three balls to bet on because one three ball didn't get done in time. And, you know, that that's poor. They're just playing too slowly, aren't they, of course? 
it's been a problem this year with the cramming the fields. That problem will be eliminated next season when they reduce these fields to sort of live styles <laughs> level. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's quite um, interesting. And in yeah, the prize money is going up to live level, and the and the fields will come. They'll, they'll certainly come down next season. All the noises coming out are going to make no. These invitations will be no cut events. Right. Um, okay. Fine. So, Excellent. So, so, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, Bay, Bay Hill was hosted since 1979. Uh, you know, my uncle Arnie, God rest his soul. Used to tinker with the track regularly. Yeah, he, he, he never let it never let it be the same every year. Um, you know, water's the main defence. Loads of water hazard. And in recent years, it's played so firm and fast. It's been a real grind, a uh, really tough assignment. Now, accurate approach play is the key, and good scrambling. They're all going to miss greens, so you've got to scramble well. There's lots of runoff areas around the greens, uh, and and unfortunately, I've got to do this. Draw bias. Draw bias. Claxon. Yeah, you know, it's significant this week. There's a strong chance of a draw bias. The Friday afternoon looks severe. I don't want to be out on Friday afternoon. I think the late early wave has got an edge here. Mm. Is there any way of telling? Uh, well, first of all, I mean, for people who might think, OK, well, in that case, I'm going to wait until the three balls are announced. When do they tend to announce the three balls and how can a golf puncher who maybe isn't as experienced as you at finding the way around the World Wide Web for the key info? How can they glean that info? Yeah, unfortunately, it's not consistent when they release them. Uh, you're relying on a lot of things. You know, the, you're relying on the sort of tournament director. Um, you might get a really sort of um, you know, really keen tournament director that gets them out. And you might have another one who's a bit more casual about it. But, you yeah, know, if you stay up all night tonight, you'll, you'll, you'll get them. Oh. And then, by, <laughs> <laughs> and then the early morning, early by early morning tomorrow, we, sh- we should be there. So, uh, yeah. And I that's think on it's, PGA Tour on the app or the website, yeah? Yeah, the PGA Tour website. I think it's sensible to wait. Um, I've got, I'm going to suggest four players that are, you know, on my final shortlist. And whichever of these four gets in the right side of the draw, they're the ones I'll be backing. OK, so you're going to hold fire on your Yeah, bet, so. yeah, I'm holding fire because I think this is a significant draw bias. So yeah, Friday afternoon looks unplayable. Mm, blimey, oh, right. I suppose the only flip side to that is if it is unplayable, they could go out on Saturday morning. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I think too it's, windy. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Sometimes these, these plans go wrong because it gets too much mm. and the you know, balls are oscillating and whatnot. But I think they'll um, they'll they'll prepare the greens at a speed so that doesn't happen. So I think they will be out in that in those tough winds and then obviously water balls everywhere. Uh, All right, mate. Yeah. Right, so keep an eye on the weather forecast. And which weather forecast app do you favour, Steve? I'll go for all of them. You can't trust one these days, can you? Um, you got so, a favourite? Uh, AccuWeather and, um, yeah, the BBC one's so beautifully designed, uh, mm. but um, not as reliable. But, um, yeah, yeah, the, the more the merrier in that regard. Righty-ho, then. So, I think you've already given it away, but we'll ask anyway. How many selections? Oh, I was hoping you wouldn't. Oh! oh, yeah, no, sorry to do that to your poor, poorly throat. <laughs> Four selections and lead on with your main fancy for the Arnold Palmer Invitational. It's Tyrrell Hatton at 35 to 1, who absolutely loves Bay Hill and seems very close to playing really well. Hatton's only PJ Tour win came in this event in 2020. He was fourth on his Bay Hill debut in 2017 and he was second last year, beaten by a shot. The course sets up superbly for him. He's arrived with loads of form and confidence. Basically, from the Open Championship onwards, he's been looking really solid. From 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 a, he was 11th in our Open, he was eighth in the Wyndham, he was eighth in the Italian Open, seventh in the Dunhill Link, second in the DP World Tour Championship. Then this year, seventh in Abu Dhabi, sixth in the Phoenix Open. Yeah, I know this is an elevated designated event, but yeah, you know, he's he's a he's a, he's a he's a he's a strong enough character to win this. Yeah, he's a, he's he, he's not a frightened rabbit. He lives and he lives in Orlando, you know, family and friends around him. He's, he, yeah, I think he's the best value in the field at 35 to one as things stand. OK, obviously the wind could be a factor. And presumably, Steve, that if he won this one in 2020, that would have been the last tournament before COVID with crowds, wouldn't it? Because the following week was players, which only lasted one. <sighs> yeah, How about good- that? It's a good so point well made. There. In those three years, isn't it? Eh? It's mad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, BC. I was, I was on Race to Burst Ground TV on, on Sunday and Tanya Stevenson was <laughs> going... still doing she, that? I've, I've just, I'm just coming to the end of that. But Tanya Stevenson used the expression BC when she was joking about how she used to back Lauren Roberts for the Arnold Palmer invitation. And yeah, for, for, I think the modern BC is before COVID, isn't it? Um, yeah. Rather than bringing Christ into calculations. Did you tip any winners? 
You normally yeah, like yeah, trap one at toaster, don't you? Yeah, I tripped, I tipped trap one in the open at toaster for a top two finish, and it finished second. So yeah, wonderful start to nice proceedings. So, yeah, yeah, Brilliant, nice. excellent stuff. Right then, so we've got Tyrrell Hatton, and following on from the fiery Englishman, I had to, I had to uh, long that one out, obviously, because you were taking a swig of your hot drink. The second selection is it's Ricky Fowler. I got loads of stick for chancing a few times last year. I don't think I'll be getting as much stick now. 66 to 1, Ricky Fowler's got to be worth a go here. He's definitely looking a lot like the old Ricky Fowler. You know, Butch well, look Hart. what happened last week, Steve. We'll, we'll come back. So, I mean, exactly. it, it, he can probably draw some inspiration from that, can't he? I think you're absolutely right. You've just put a small amount of icing on my, my, my back there. <laughs> <laughs> but he's back with Butch Harmon, and we all know Butch Harmon, you know, the, the greatest coach ever. Yeah, he's got that you know, magic dust he sprinkles on these players, and you see the confidence coursing back through through Vicky's, Ricky's veins. He's, he's already had a hole-in-one this year at the, in the Phoenix Open. I think we're going to see a, a return to the PGA Tour winners enclosure. 2019 Phoenix Open was his last win. Um, but he's got a great record in Florida. He won the Players' Championship. You must remember that one. He, you know, he won the Players' Championship in stunning fashion in, in 2015. He won the Honda Classic by four shots in 2017. He's lived in Florida for ages. And his recent form, let's go for his recent form, because he, he's, he's clearly there now. Sixth place in the Fortinet Championship in September. Nearly won the Zozo Championship. Finished second in that. And his last three starts, 11th in the Farms Insurance Open, 10th in the Phoenix Open, 20th in the Genesis Invitational. So, yeah, he was chalked up at 80 to 1 on opening shows. I think there's so much juice in that. It's a former world number four we're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, by the way, talking to Butch Harmon, I mean, you obviously know how much I love Butch Harmon, one of the greatest sports broadcasters ever. But I did... Yeah. I did sort of blanch a little bit at Claude Harmon's tweet in the week. I don't know if you saw that. He said... Um, it was something about how his dad deserves to be inducted into the Hall of Fame because uh, he's devoted his life to helping other golfers. I mean, you know, he's hardly Florence Nightingale, is he? You know, I mean, he's I think he's found time for the odd steak and, and fine red wine, hasn't he? You know, I mean, is it, yeah, I, I think most of us would swap lives with Butch Harmon, wouldn't we? Yeah, I don't think you should be inducting uh, non-players into the, the, the Hall of Fame. There. Yeah, they, 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 there's plenty of people out There's probably a, a, a tea lady at uh, Bay Hill that has helped the golfers every year at uh, the Arnold Palmer Invitation. Should we going to induct her in the Hall of Fame? No, that's not for me. OK, fair enough. Right then, so Tyrrell Hatton, Ricky Fowler, next. Keith Mitchell. We're going to take a chance on a, on a visor wearer. <laughs> um, yeah, well, we, we must make the point that Keith Mitchell's visor is the best of a bad bunch. He's, he's got a very thick visor. <laughs> That's like, yeah. like uh, it's, it was, it's a lot it was sturdier. Than... It was a Korean player. Do you remember in the bronze medal shoot off? Oh, Olympics? C.T. Pan. C.T. Pan. And his wife had the visor that could have kept the shade off the whole field. It was massive. <laughs> yeah, C.T. Pan's wife's visor. Was <laughs> thick, but yeah, Mitchell's got some sturdiness to his visor. So I think he is king of the visors. And he, yeah, he's been impressive this year, despite wearing a visor. He was fourth in the Pebble Beach Pro-Am at the start of this month. Fifth in the Genesis Invitational last time out. He's in that final three ball with Rahm and, uh, and Max Homer at the, at the Genesis. You know, he didn't disgrace himself there. It's a, we're talking about a world-class golfer here, an underachiever. You know, he can be spectacular from tee to green. You know, he, his peers often talk about it. Yeah, they'd love to have that free-flowing swing he's got with the driver. You know, he, he's a jaw-droppingly good driver. Um, and I think the switch to Florida, might, you know, how he turns this form into a trophy, he prefers putting on Bermuda grass greens, uh, is one PGA Tour title came in Florida in the 2019 Honda Classic, and he's got a great record at, at, at Bay Hill. He was sixth in the 2019 Arnold Palmer, fifth in 2020. Like it. What's the most places you've seen so far? There are only 120 runners. You, can you can you get eight? You can get ten. You can get ten. Yeah, ten. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah. as we always say, probably the more places are on offer, the less chance you've got of getting best price. But if you are after the safety net of, of lots of each way places, then go for it. So Steve's left the big names at the head of the market alone so far. One more tip. Who's this going to be, Steve? It's Tom Hoagie at 125 to 1. We talked about accurate iron play being the key to success at, at Bay Hill. Hoagie is one of the best in the world in this category. And his short game's never been better than it is now. I think uh, I think it's a bit disrespectful to Mr. Hoggy to to chalk up 125 to one. He's more confident than ever. Won his maiden PGA Tour title last year. He won the QBE Shootout Pairs event with Sahith Thigala 
just before Christmas. I know that's a, a jolly fun event, but uh, yeah, he has played in Florida. I think it, it has got some significance. And he started this year with third place on his Century Tournament of Champions debut. Um, amazing performance. Last time out, Genesis Invitational, another elevated designated event, 14th in that. You know, give Tom Hogan some respect. He's the world number 30. He's a big old price there. Yeah, and he can get one of those 10 places, no trouble at all. Nice one. Brilliant. Some very uh, bold selections there. OK, should we have a little spin through the, the fancy contenders? Because obviously all the big guns are out. Um, <laughs> contractually we'll with, obliged. We'll start with John Rahm, 6-1. to one. I mean, you did oh. say last week that these each-way bets on him just never lose. Obviously, they, that's not always going to be the case. Was he just a little bit short for you this week, or do you think the track won't quite <laughs> suit? I think he's a, um, yeah, I've got no interest in playing at six to one, John Rahm. You know, he made his Bay Hill debut last year. He finished 17th. You know, he doesn't normally play this. He probably wouldn't be playing this if it wasn't elevated, designated. You know, he, he, he always makes merry in California at the start of the year, but he's never won in Florida on the PGA Tour. And, um, yeah, I've got no interest in playing that. OK. Have you got any other comments on any of the fancy contenders? Don't forget, oh, yeah, yeah, very much. Hang on a second. Sorry, just a quick plug for the new Racing Post comment service. All the leading contenders for both events. Steve will give an individual player comment for those. So check those out in the Racing Post newspaper. Or if you're a members club subscriber, you can get those at nine o'clock tonight. How about that? Right then, Steve, go on. Who else? Do you, what, what other strong thoughts have you got well, on the card at the head of affairs? I mean, we must. It's a big three these days. They've been jostling for that world number one mm. starters. And uh, <clears throat> Rory McIlroy into one's another one I can leave alone. He putted amazingly when he won this in 2018. Yeah, the greatest year of my life. Um, you know, yeah, we were on him at a big price for that one. And, um, you yeah, know, he hasn't really fired in the stakes this year. Is he 32nd in Phoenix, 29th at Riviera? So, yeah, the top two I can leave alone. The, by far the best of the of the front three for me is the one that's the biggest price, Scotty Scheffler. 10 to 1, the, 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 the Crocus, as you, as, you, as you nicknamed him now. I mean, I can't play 10 to 1 without knowing he's got the, the tea time I'm after. But, he's, you know, he's the defending champion. He's hitting his approaches stiff again. And, and he's fresher than Rama McIlroy. If you remember before the Genesis, I was talking about he had to play a pro-am on the Monday, uh, which was the last thing he needed after winning in Phoenix. But um, this week, it's different. Rama McIlroy played in the pro-am yesterday. Uh, Seminole uh, pro-member event, really elite golf club. Um, and Scheffler didn't play in that. So I think, yeah, yeah Scheffler could easily do what he did last year. He won in Phoenix, won at Bay Hill. That nickname's yet to take off. I was quite hoping after we christened him the Crocus, because obviously he comes out to Bloomington, that might see on the peak of his, or on the brim of his cap, might see a picture of a Crocus, but it hasn't. I didn't, don't go know, it's viral, dot, didn't go viral, didn't go viral. No, Maybe this, it didn't. I'm very this clip might go viral. That. Let's do something that makes this clip go viral, and then you might be, okay. you know, what are you going to do? I don't think it's going to happen. I might have to give up on that one. All right, are we all done with the Arnold Palmer? What's that? My <laughs> attempts to do something to make it go viral. <laughs> oh, that, I mean, you'd get a million views on TikTok if you did that, I'm sure. Hey, there Honestly, you go. Are you, have you tried TikTok yet? I haven't tried anything. No, 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 no. Rubbish. No, Absolute rubbish. It's not for Try. me. I'm, well, I'm too old, aren't I? More of a TikTok man myself. Right then, we're all done on the Arnold Palmer. So let's look uh, at the other tournament taking place this week, which is the Puerto Rico Open. You will hear Steve mispronounce it various times, but more importantly, we'll get his selections. As I said, an absolutely crap field. Nate Lashley, favourite at 14. Brandon Harkins, 18. Andrew Novak, 18. Nor me. 22, Scott Piercy. 22, Cameron Percy. Oh, there's even a watch your bets here. Piercy and Percy right next to each other. <laughs> Just to complicate matters. Sam Stevens, never heard of him, 22. Eric Van Royen, 25. Akshay Bartia is 25, Ryan Gerard 28, MJ Defu 28, and 33 Bar. What the hell? Who are all these people? Are these like all? Are these all the stars from the Corn Ferry Tour who are coming down and taking their chance with the big guns away to to notch a debut triumph? Yeah, it's a real hodgepodge, isn't it? Because you also get some veterans dipping their toes for a bit of fun. Oh, did Frank... old Lenny get in? Old Lenny's right on the cut line on the alternates, isn't he? Yeah, old, old Lenny's on tenterhooks waiting for, for the invite. Carlos Franco is in. Is yeah, he I mean, the general? Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah it's, it's a little bit of fun. It's not on the not on the goggle box, I'm afraid. But um, Rolly uh, yes, Rollins, pop, he's playing. Mm, as things stand, you know, pre-tea times, this is the best betting event of, of, of the week. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, I've, okay. got th I've got three for you. And um, as I say... 
I like it. I like my chances. All right. Should we get the track details first? Yes. And it, it could confuse people because it's had a few name changes through the years. It's, it's now known as the Grand Reserve Golf Club. It used to be Trump International, then Coco Beach. Uh, it's in Rio Grande, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico. Um, 7,506 yards, par 72, four par fives, 120 runners in this one as well. Very flat track. Paspal and grass. Wind is normally the uh, the defence of this layout. Not much in the forecast this week. So we're, we're going to see loads of birdies and possibly a maiden winner. Seven of the last nine Puerto, Puerto Rico Opens have been won by a maiden. Jolly good. So you've already revealed you've got three tips. Let's have the first of them. Harrison Endicott. 50s went just before we came on air. 45 to 1 available. Still full of juice for me. This is a 26-year-old Australian. He played on the uh, Lato, Latino America Tour in 2018. He's comfortable in this region. He won He won on the Corn Ferry Tour last year. A five-shot victory in the, in the Huntsville Championship. Now he's on the PGA Tour and he's been playing well. 12th spot in the Fortinet Championship. It was a great start to his PGA Tour career. And he was 10th in the Bermuda Championship. Um, you know, an island, an island event. Um, and he was 22nd in the American Express. Last week, Honda Classic, 26th. All these finishes might not sound much to, uh, <clears throat> to regular listeners, but this event is so weak that they are heady, heady, heady results. Yeah, I think, 26 I think... against the, in Honda probably, I mean, it probably means he'd win this by half the track, doesn't it? Why is he not so favourite? He's a really attractive prize for me, yeah, yeah. Mm. So he's, he's the number one. You're very keen on Harrison Endicott. Right then, if it's not going to be Harrison Endicott, who could it be? It's Sam Stevens, uh, who has been back 25 to 1. Still a good bet. 26 years old, same as Endicott. <clears throat> um, loads of potential. I like what I've seen so far from, from Stevens. He started his professional career on the Latino America circuit. He won the Columbia Classic in 2021. He was good on the Corn Ferry Tour last year. And now he's been, you know, he made a decent start on the PGA Tour. I mean, you talk about. Yeah, the, the form of playing in you know, in better 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 class of events in good company. He was thirteenth in the Farmers Insurance Open. <clears throat> yeah, that, yeah. That's, so, uh, I, I just let that speak for itself. Yeah, I can't you're speak. That sing. I can't. Yes, speak. You can't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if Wayne Marder was here, he, he'd understand. It's like I've just seen back to back nine darters. Mm. Um, but yeah, yeah. Sam Stevens, he, he missed the cut by a couple of shots last week. Um, but you know, he, he shot a Friday 69. So yeah, yeah. He, he looks like a player going places. You know, you know, I obsessed with watching these interviews. I, you know, I watched Sam, I, you know, Sam Stevens looks assured and confident. And the fellow that I'm about to tip as my third selection is another one. Like after the Honda classic last week, he, you know, he, 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 you can tell, I think I'm a good people reader. Yeah. You know, I sound very cocky there, but you can tell who, who's, who's genuinely confident and who's just blagging it. Mm. OK, right then. Well, with that in mind, you've given us a clue as to who your next tip might be. Yeah, it's, another... it's, not Harry, it's not Harry Higgs, is it? It's not Harry Higgs. It's, it's Ryan Girard. Uh, 28 to oh, 1. Yeah, he had a great week last week, didn't he? <clears throat> he had a great week last week. He banked a check for four hundred and eleven thousand um, dollars, having Monday qualified for the Honda Classic. You know, it just shows what what you can do. So he's qualified for the Honda that he's finished alone in fourth place. Yeah, this could be the launch pad for him. He's only 23 years old. He won on the Canadian Tour last summer. He was one of the best players on that circuit. And then um, he finished third in a Corn Ferry Tour event a couple of weeks ago. So he, he's taken his chance where he, where he can get it. Uh, and now he's proved himself in PGA Tour company. So, yeah, Gerard is you know, he's riding the crest of a wave. And as I say, I, I like his attitude. Yeah, he, he, he's, he's a big runner for this. What did he say in his press? Was he keeping his feet on the ground or was he getting carried away with how well he played last week? Well, the, 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 the reporter was asking him loads of questions and he just kept coming up with the right answers. You know, like you know, what his plans are for the future. And he just he, he what, said, what's I'm... the capital of Peru? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He just said, I'm going to play golf, just going to play golf. And, um, you know, if you play well, you know, if doors open. I just like the cut of his jib. And, uh, yeah, if you can finish fourth in the Honda, you can win this, can't you? Mm, absolutely it's a really really why is it such a weak field because sometimes don't they sort of amalgamate european and u.s tour events you know for some of these little shoulders these little fringe tournaments i mean it's just such a i mean it, we might look back in five years and say cool what a star-studded lineup it turned out to be for the 2023 puerto rico open it's all about potential i suppose isn't it i hope we're looking back in five years and, and saying that yeah 
Let's just say we're here in five years. Well, yeah, that's the point it was back Yeah, the, the way I'm feeling today. Yeah, yeah, it's an optimistic assessment. I think one of your problems is you've got to carry around all that hair. I mean, it's getting so tall. It's hard to it's hard for producer Will to get it all in the frame. <laughs> when when's the famous haircut? March fifteen. March fifteen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not long. Not long. Uh, have you told Tommy he's having his hair cut yet? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's aware of it. He's aware of it. Yeah, yeah. March is 15th. Is he excited or <coughs> big date in our diaries? I don't think he's too keen. I think, you know, kids get confused, don't they? The, the, the idea of cutting, we're always telling him how dangerous scissors are. And, you know, yeah, I think he's going to think he's associating bloodshed with the, with the haircut. Oh, so, no. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. Well, look, uh, right. I think we're all done on Puerto Rico, aren't we? Should we reiterate this week's tips? We shall. Okay. Arnold Palmer Invitational. Tyrrell Hatton, Ricky Fowler, Keith Mitchell, Tom Hoagie. Puerto Rico Open. Harrison Endicott, Sam Stevens, Ryan Gerard. And if you're only having one bet this week, what would you advocate? I'd advocate Harrison Endicott each way. Because, okay. yeah, as things stand, I can't um, get too heavily involved in the Arnold Palmer, just waiting for those tea times. So, um, yeah, 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 I'm going to be watching like a hawk. Um, uh, for those tea times, we want to we want our players out late on the first day. Okay, you do, I mean, obviously, we do know, Steve, that weather forecasts can change as well, can't they? So, you know, it's True. worth keeping an eye not just on the tea times, but also the True. weather. True, good point, well made. Brilliant. Okay, and you can get in tomorrow's Racing Post all Steve's player comments, plus his uh, expanded reasoning on what he fancies, plus those enhanced new price boxes that also have all the form. And the key attributes, so loads there. Please do check that out. Uh, are we done? I think so. Anything exciting between now and next week? Uh, no. <laughs> Literally nothing. <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't think so. No, I don't. I um, I just want to get uh, get back to full fitness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, sobriety. Yeah, Chris Kirk's my inspiration. <clears throat> I, think, I, I think I need a week off the off the off. The so album. you normally go out on a Wednesday night, don't you? But that that'll be that, off yeah, tomorrow, will it? I think that's off the cards. Yeah, yeah. Because I did I did Wednesday night and Saturday night last week, and it's not done me any favors. So uh, okay. yeah, Chris. Yeah, Chris Kirk has shown. Yeah, you know, he, he, he's a very ha- happy, cheerful chap. Mm. You know, maybe I need to go the whole hog. Um, I always think we. I always think with alcohol, some of the happiest people I know are children, and they don't drink, do they? So that's a good you know, point. That's a good I, point. I, 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 I quite often have a dry month, and I don't feel particularly morbid. I feel quite comforted by the fact that I'm doing myself a bit of good. So yeah, it's it's worth giving it a go. I reckon. Well, when Chris Kurt won, the first thing he thanked was his sobriety. He did, yeah, 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 yeah he, he did. did. So um, that just says it all, doesn't it? It so, certainly um, does, mate. OK, well, you never know. There might be a link between tipping winners and not drinking. But it's probably unlikely, isn't it? We shall see. OK, brilliant stuff. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you to producer Will, most of all. Thank you for watching. We're back next week for a big week. It's Players' Championship and the Kenya Open. Hope you can join us for that. Mm-hmm.